Hi, thanks for listening to Top Audiobooks. Remember to follow our channel here on the platform, and also our social media. We prepare a graphic of the book, with the author's key points and main ideas. Click that book graphic link in description now, and have access to an illustrated material with simple and easy steps, so you know everything about the book in minutes. Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway by Susan Jeffers Everyone feels fear. Yet, some people move ahead in spite of it, while others are paralyzed by it. This shows the issue is not with fear, but how we handle our fears. The truth is, fear surfaces whenever we take a risk or try something new, and it's a natural and essential part of growth. The key is not to avoid fear, but to develop the skills to act in spite of it. This book helps you to understand fear and equips you with techniques and tools to conquer your fear and live life fully. In this summary, we've organized the key ideas into two parts, understanding fear and overcoming your fears. Use this book as a guide to re-educate yourself. Then, each time you feel afraid, Use one or more of the tools provided to move ahead. Part 1. Understanding Fear There are three key levels of fear. Level 1 fears are stories that you tell yourself about what will happen or things you must do, such as the fear of being alone or fear of public speaking. Level 2 fears involve your inner states of mind. These are generalized fears that cut across many areas of life, such as the fear of rejection, failure, success, and affect your sense of self and abilities. Beneath every fear is the ultimate fear that you won't be able to handle something. That is, all fears are fundamentally due to a lack of confidence. Use the tools and ideas in this book to build the confidence that you can handle anything in your life. When you can shift your dominant thoughts from I can't handle it, to I will handle it, you'll fear virtually nothing. Most fears are instilled from childhood. For example, you may have grown up with protective parents who were constantly worrying and warning you to be careful. These send subtle signals that you can't handle yourself. However, there's no point examining the past. Instead, focus on the present and take action to change what you don't like. If you don't want your fears to stop you from getting the most out of life, make a decision now to conquer your fears. The five truths about fear. One of the key ideas in the book is this. When you can accept your fear and act in spite of it, you'll naturally overcome it. Jeffers helps us to understand why this is so by breaking it down into five truths. Truth number one. So long as you're growing and trying something new, you will feel fear. Hence, there's no point in trying to avoid your fears. Truth number two. Many people think, when this happens, then I'll do that. However, the only way to remove a fear is to keep doing what you fear to do. When you face the unknown and handle it, you'll learn to do it better each time and gradually lose your fear of it. Truth number three, it's less scary to push through a fear than to constantly feel crippled and worried about the what-ifs. Each time you confront a fear, you remove some of the uncertainty. The more you do so, the more you realize that you can handle anything that life throws at you and become more liberated and confident to live life fully. Truth number four, When you confront your fear and do it anyway, not only do you overcome the fear, you also feel good about yourself. Mastering your fears can be deeply satisfying and fulfilling. Truth number five, everyone has their fears. They just don't usually talk about it. In short, you're not alone. Part two, overcoming your fears. We'll now look at various concepts and tools to face your fears and overcome them. One key to handling fear is to move from pain to power. 
This means moving from a position of helplessness, depression, and paralysis to one of choice, energy, and action. Power refers to the inner strength and self-love that empowers you to take control of your life situations. Many women, in particular, have been conditioned to believe that power is unfeminine and unattractive. In reality, love and power go together. People who are self-assured are generally better able to open up their hearts to love. Here are three ways to move from pain to power. First, use the pain to power chart presented in the text and graphic summaries to develop your awareness and start making empowering decisions. Place an enlarged version of this chart on your wall and place a pin on the chart where you currently see yourself. Move the pin daily according to how you feel that day. Use this chart to guide your daily decisions, reminding yourself of the direction you wish to go. If you make a bad decision, don't get angry with yourself. Simply learn from the mistake and move ahead so you shift back to power. You can keep this exercise fun and light by adding fun quotes or getting your children to make their own charts as a family activity. Second, shift your vocabulary to move yourself from pain to power. What you say reinforces your subconscious perception of yourself. Words like, I can't, suggest that you're weak or have no choice, while words like, I won't, suggests that you have choices and know your priorities. Thus, it's more empowering to say, I'd love to come to the party, but I must prepare for an important meeting tomorrow, than to say, I can't come to the party. Jeffers shares this simple experiment which demonstrates the power of words. Get person A to hold out his arm at a right angle and repeat with emotion 10 times, I'm a weak and unworthy person. Then, get person B to stand in front of person A and try to pull down his arm. This should be done relatively easily. Next, get person A to repeat with feeling, I'm a strong and worthy person, before getting person B to try again. This time, person B will probably find it much more difficult to pull the arm down. You can refer to our text summary for a range of words and phrases that can empower or weaken you. Choose your vocabulary deliberately and speak more powerfully. Finally, you can expand your comfort zone by taking one small risk at a time. Each time you do something risky outside your comfort zone, it pushes your zone outward, gradually increasing the range of things that you can handle comfortably. Every night before sleeping, plan the risks you'll take the next day and visualize yourself doing it as vividly as possible. Each time you find yourself hesitating at something, try to push through the uncertainty. Even if you fail to overcome your fear at that moment, you can try again in the future. Taking Responsibility It's common for people to complain about how their kids make them worry how their spouses give them grief, or how they're stuck in their jobs due to the bad economy. They blame their circumstances or other people for their lousy marriage, lousy career, unhappy life, and think that their lives would be better only if others change. In so doing, they're giving their power away and acting as if they are helpless victims. In reality, we are in control of how we react to any situation in our life. Taking responsibility means recognizing the choices and power that you have and putting yourself in the position to exercise them. Jeffers breaks this down into seven definitions of what it means to take responsibility and how you can recognize it when you fall into a victim mindset. First, don't blame an external party or factor for what you feel, do, or have. Only you, and you alone, can control your thoughts, feelings, and actions. Second, don't blame yourself for bad decisions or for not being in control. You always do the best you can based on your level of personal growth at that point in time. 
Don't bash yourself for what has already happened or think, I should have known better. Embrace the experience, learn from it, and move on. Third, don't be a victim. Learn to recognize when you're not taking responsibility. Each time you feel emotions like anger, impatience, disappointment, self-pity, or envy, step back and ask yourself, what am I not doing in my life that's causing me to feel this way about the person or situation? Fourth, silence the chatterbox. We all have a little voice in our heads that constantly plays out what-if scenarios and predicts how we can fail, lose, or get hurt. Become aware of this voice so you can silence it using the exercises in this book. Fifth, identify what's trapping you. Most of us feel stuck because we constantly choose something we don't want in order to achieve something that we desire even more. For example, to feel loved, get attention, or avoid rejection. By identifying these underlying desires, you can see new ways to get unstuck. Sixth, decide what you truly want and take action. Don't wait for others to give it to you. Finally, be aware that you always have choices. In any situation, you always have the power to choose how to feel and act. That is, you'll never have no choice. You can cultivate awareness and learn to face your fears using these six exercises. Hi, thanks for listening to Top Audiobooks. Remember to follow our channel here on the platform and also our social media. We prepare a graphic of the book with the author's key points and main ideas. Click that book graphic link in description now and have access to an illustrated material with simple and easy steps, so you know everything about the book in minutes. First, think of an area where you feel stuck and list down all the desires that may be keeping you trapped. For example, what is it you don't want to do or face? Or is there a self-image you want to retain? Second, when you face a tough challenge, take time out to write down all the positive and negative ways you can feel and act. Imagine yourself going through all of them and realize the wide range of options you have. Consciously choose the positive responses. Third, think of something you're upset about and list down all the ways you can change it to a positive experience. Look for new points of view in any situation. Fourth, look for gifts or positive outcomes that came from a bad situation, such as an illness or loss of a job. Fifth, during conversations, pay attention to what you say. For example, do you complain or focus on what you're learning? Finally, Challenge yourself not to criticize or complain about anyone or anything for one full week. Practicing Positive Thinking Our frame of mind affects how we feel and act to create our reality and outcomes. Unfortunately, we're surrounded by so much negativity and naysayers that it takes conscious effort to stay positive. When you're optimistic about something, it's common for others to tell you that you're being unrealistic. However, negative expectations are just as unrealistic as positive ones. In fact, more than 90% of our worries don't ever happen. To counter the negatives around you, practice positive thinking daily and surround yourself with positive people. Affirmations are a great tool. These are positive statements that something good is already happening. For example, I am relaxed, knowing I can handle anything. Place an audio player beside your bed and play your affirmations first thing in the morning when you wake up. End your day with positive, relaxing materials and affirmations. Pick a special affirmation each day and write it somewhere you will see regularly. Repeat it at least 10 times each time you see it. 
Whenever negative thoughts surface in the day, catch yourself and repeat the affirmations to out-talk the negative voice. Each time your positive energy is depleted, take time out to recharge with your affirmations. Laugh whenever you can and lighten yourself up. Listen to relaxing or uplifting music and plug into positive audio or reading material when you travel. You can also write positive quotes on index cards or post-it notes and place them everywhere. Making no-lose decisions. Most of us are conditioned to be afraid of making mistakes and bad decisions. We try to figure out if each option is right or wrong, then spend huge amounts of time revisiting our decisions. In reality, you can't predict the future, and every path comes with opportunities. Make no-lose decisions by considering only the opportunities and what can go right with each option. When you're making a major decision, focus only on potential gains, not potential losses. Research your alternatives so you understand your options, identify your priorities, and relax in the knowledge that you'll be able to handle any bad decision and learn from it. Treat your whole life as a university so you can view events like divorce, illness, or retrenchment as merely opportunities to learn and grow. After you've made a decision, discard your expectations of how things should be. Focus fully on the actual opportunities in front of you rather than dwell on the what-ifs. Accept full responsibility for the decision. Never blame others if things don't go well. Instead, feel good about the lessons you're learning and embrace your mistakes as a natural part of growth. If you've done your best to make something work, but it turns out to be a bad choice, let it go and move on. There's no point in protecting a past decision for the sake of doing so. Instead, focus on course correction, recognizing that what's right for you could change as you grow. Handling relationship changes. As you grow, your close friends and family members may feel uncomfortable and start reacting negatively. Don't be afraid to change your social circle. Both positivity and negativity are contagious. As you become more positive, you may find it less enjoyable to be around negative people, especially friends who blame and complain. Don't be afraid to outgrow your old friends. Stay true to your path. Those who are keen to grow will eventually shift under your influence while others will gradually disappear. Expand your circle by consciously reaching out to people you admire. Find their contacts and initiate contact via a phone call or email. You can also meet positive, growth-oriented people at self-improvement workshops or seminars. Likewise, your spouse may feel threatened by your growth. Have faith that he or she wants the best for you and will one day appreciate your positive changes. If you eventually end an unhealthy relationship, be confident that you'll find a positive mate who will support you on your growth. As you try to overcome your fears, you may also feel frustrated if your friends or family seem unsupportive. Initially, you may swing between aggression and passivity as you learn how to assert yourself. If your loved ones discourage you from stepping out, or tell you that you'll fail, don't lash out at them. Instead, understand their insecurity, share your confidence, and let them know you want their support. For example, you can say, I understand why you feel I'm being selfish. I've not been as available to you as before. It's not easy for me to change, but I really want to grow myself. I'd love to have your support and I want you to know that I love you very much. How can we improve the situation together? Be patient. Give yourself the time and space to learn and adjust. Try to center yourself using relaxation audios, meditation, or affirmations. Living a whole life. 
It's common for people to devote their entire lives to someone or something, such as their spouse, kids, or work, and feel devastated when they lose what they consider to be the center of their lives. Your life comprises many aspects, including love, friendships, personal growth, leisure, work, family, contribution, etc. Plot out the key areas of your life on a whole life grid and make a commitment to grow each of these areas. Having a full grid will make it less scary to lose any one component. Even if something happens, you won't feel as if your entire life has collapsed and it'll be easier to rebuild that part of your grid. Focus on each box in your grid, visualizing what you'd want that aspect of your life to be like. Imagine what you do and feel if you truly care about and are committed to that area, then take concrete actions to make your vision a reality. Stay motivated by plugging into a self-help group, a growth buddy, or a professional who can help you stay on track. Keep asking, how whole is my life? And set daily goals for all the boxes in your grid rather than focus on only one or two areas. Saying yes to the universe. One of the keys to facing your fears is to learn to accept what life puts in your path, even if it's painful. Saying yes doesn't mean giving up. It's about facing the realities of the situation so you're in a position of power to act on it. Imagine you've just lost both your legs after a major car accident. Rather than lament, why me? and wish it didn't happen, accept what has happened and focus on what you can do with the situation. Don't deny your pain as it would only build up and manifest in other ways like anger, depression, or physical ailments. Accept and deal with the pain without blaming yourself. To help yourself say yes, read up about others who found meaning in dire situations, for example, those who were imprisoned in concentration camps or were severely crippled. Surround yourself with signs and quotes to remind yourself to make the most of your situation. It helps to affirm your acceptance of an idea by physically nodding your head. Practice saying yes to small daily events. For example, when you lose something or when someone spills coffee on you. Keep looking for positives in any experience. Choose love and trust. When we give, most of us subconsciously expect something in return, be it appreciation, love, or other rewards. If you can give freely without expecting anything in return, you won't be afraid of being conned or losing out. There are many ways to start giving freely, including giving your appreciation, praise, money, love, useful information and resources, or your time and energy. The key is to offer them freely without expecting anything back in return. Our fear of loss or sense of lack is all in the mind. Build awareness of your abundance by listing down at least 150 things that you had or have and keep adding your daily blessings. Try giving away what you think you lack. Keep reading and listening to positive material and repeating your affirmations. When you realize how much you have, you will no longer be afraid to give. This book includes many examples and stories of people who have pushed past their fears as well as life scenarios to help us reflect on the concepts being presented. Jeffers also shares a simplified model of being to explain how we can use the tools and positive signals in this book to overcome negativity and connect with our higher self. If you've enjoyed the ideas in this summary, do get a copy of the book for more details or visit susanjeffers.com for more stories, affirmations, and resources. Hi, thanks for listening to Top Audiobooks. Remember to follow our channel here on the platform, and also our social media. 
we prepare a graphic of the book, with the author's key points and main ideas. Click that book graphic link in description now, and have access to an illustrated material with simple and easy steps, so you know everything about the book in minutes.